Do not scream or show it. It came without warning. Something. My work will continue. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Case Michael Myers. To the untrained eye, there's nothing visually abnormal with this angelic young boy, but one must remember not to be fooled by his calm, unassuming facade. You know I have to fucking work tonight. Oh my god, you're pathetic. The whore with the big tits hanging down to her knees? Flappy ass tits. Bitch, I will crawl over there and I will so fuck the shit out of you. Oh, okay. <laughs> a fucking break he's probably a queer hey shit pants shut up fuck you think she'd suck my dick for a quarter and let me suck her tits that fucking drunk prick fuck ronnie ain't my dad that is some deep ass serious faggoty ass shit man that c-u-n-t yeah needs to get laid dude She's fucking hot. Goddamn son of a bitch. What? Fucking kids. Jesus Christ. Don't they think I have anything better to do with my time than clean up this shit, fucking little idiots? If you do me dirt on this one, I will. I'll fucking hold it against you. Hey, you know you. what? I'll fuck her. You don't want to fuck her? I'll fuck her. I'm right here. Fuck. Fuck, fuck, you know what? Queer. Shit, dick pits. Fuck. Shit. I'll fuck her. You don't want to fuck her? I'll fuck her. Fuck. I'll fuck her. You don't want to fuck her? I'll fuck her. Fuck. I'll fuck her. You don't want to fuck her? I'll fuck her. I'll fuck her. You don't want to fuck her? I'll fuck fucking prick. I'll fuck her. You don't want to fuck her? Fucking I'll fuck her. Yeah. I'll fuck her. Fuck, 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 fuck. Hi, I'm Scout Taylor Compton from Rob Zombie's Halloween, and you're listening to The Hysteria Continues. And uh, welcome to this series continues. I guess it's probably too late to uh, put out a parent, parental ad, uh, audio advisory notice on that intro, isn't it? Mm. Well, <laughs> it was very difficult to find suitable um, uh, audio that wasn't um, 18s rated. Yes. Well, this will be an 18s rated uh, show, uh, partly because we are covering, as you probably guessed, um, uh, the new Downton Abbey movie. So <laughs> that sounded like Maggie Smith herself. Thank you. It did. Um, no, we are covering finally after we've been asked for so many years to cover this movie. It is Rob Zombie's Halloween Redux from 2007. So it's going to be an interesting one, this, to put it uh, well bluntly and politely, because uh, I think we we all have strong feelings for this movie. Whether they are good or bad, you'll find out uh, uh, shortly. But um, but yeah, so are we happy to be back in Haddonfield for our Halloween 2019 show? Eric, are you happy to be back in fucking I can't Haddonfield? wait! I love this movie so much! Oh my god! <laughs> you didn't swear though, Eric. I'm, I'm not quite sure you're, you're really giving it your all. I think we've got... We've got enough swearing in that little intro there to last us a lifetime. Okay. And I know Nathan Nathan doesn't approve, so I don't want to upset him. Well, I did see, um, for Nathan's sake, you left out the brown word. Uh, and I know Nathan doesn't like the brown word, do you? No, no, you know how I hate the brown word. I think the brown word was in there somewhere. Oh, was in it? The intro. Pro- probably was. Yeah. It was a cornucopia of um, swearing, wasn't it? But uh, how are you, Nathan, anyway? I'm good. Isn't a cornucopia a centerpiece or something? Isn't that what that is? A cornucopia is, without looking up, it's uh, it's lots of things, isn't it? Yes. Together? Mm. Yeah, it's a collection. Collection, kind of. yes. Could be a sentence. That is the yes. cornucopia. Cornucopia. I love it. So classy. Are you, <laughs> are you thinking of movie. a smorgasbord, maybe, or something? A little uh, bit more cheesy, uh, possibly, mm. yes. But, but uh, I will say, in honor of the Rob Zombie uh, Halloween film, I will utter this word, fudge. <laughs> <gasps> oh, my God. <gasps> Butters. <laughs> <laughs> Well, hamburgers. Um, blimey. Well, um, thankfully, we put out that parental advisory notice a little bit earlier. But, Joseph, are you looking forward to being back to Haddonfield? Oh, yeah. Uh, to prepare for the show, I uh, choked my chicken, purged my snorkel all over some flappy tits. So I am ready for Dro- this film. <gasps> Droopy ass tits. <laughs> yes. So we will be coming on to um, Rob Zombie's. <laughs> Halloween. Uh, we will be coming later. on to Rob Zombie. I don't no. think I will. 
Ew, Eric. Come on, we are Justin's, not. We are not Justin's, in Halloween. You should not speak ill of such a uh, such a uh, artiste. Mm. Yes. Well, it's, I think it's fair to say this is one probably we've had more requests to cover this movie than pretty much any other movie. So we finally re- uh, relented, although we didn't, um, we're saving, we didn't want the love to go, you know, spend, be completely spent um, by this movie and its sequel. So we're not covering the sequel, although we might m- obviously mention it uh, in context, but uh, maybe that joy will come in 12 months time. Next Halloween, yes. Next Halloween. So, so yeah, but before we get on to uh, Rob Zombie's Halloween and we let the loving commence, uh, let's talk a little bit about what we've been watching recently. So, Joseph, uh, have you watched anything you'd like to tell us about? Yeah, I've watched a lot of stuff. You know, it's Halloween season, so uh, I've got my horror kick in full throttle. I've been watching uh, stuff pretty much every day. But the only the only two uh, things I've watched that are, I guess, new to uh, the listening audience is I caught up with the uh, second episode of Creep Show, And I love the first episode so much, especially the, uh, the House of the Head. Um, but I felt this second episode was kind of a step down in quality. I still enjoyed it, but um, I don't know. It just felt more like a Tales from the Crypt rather than a Creep Show episode. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but I just, it didn't have the inventiveness of that uh, first episode still still pretty fun um i like the werewolf story in the second episode um i'm interested to uh, check out the rest of the episode so yeah it's not a total wash yet i'm i'm into it i do like that the um you know like i said the episodes it's just two stories and in most uh, both stories are usually only like 20 to 25 minutes long so it's a kind of uh you know it's over and done with in a flash kind of good fun you know just fun little light popcorn horror so yeah, definitely check that out if you haven't seen it yet. It's on Shudder. Okay. Mm, I saw I saw the second episode as well, and uh, I agree it's a, it's a slight step down from the first one. I do like the fact that like that werewolf episode, the werewolf effects are done in a very eighties way. They're not utilizing all the tools at their disposal to make it more realistic. It's very rubbery. Yeah, they're practical. And, yeah, they're yeah. yeah. It's quite rubbery and fake as well. Um, and the second episode with that creature, it looked like the sort of uh, the young version of the alien from Alien Three. I thought it was it was quite good, but for me. It was the weakest of the four short stories that have appeared so far. But uh, yeah, I'm going to definitely stick with it because this is my type of um, TV series where it's short, sort of bite-sized things and you don't necessarily have to invest 10 hours into it to, to get everything out of it. Right. Cool. I've not caught up with it yet. Uh, Nathan, are you caught up with uh, Creep Show TV show so far? No, I haven't seen any of them yet. I don't have Shudder. Okay. Well, that's never stopped you or certainly Eric before. Oh. Hey, I... I have Shudder, yes. Oh, do you? I have okay. Shudders. <laughs> well, before we... I, sh- uh... I shudder to think of it. Yes. Mm. Now shudder up so I can get on to my next... Uh... You okay. should or move on to your next <laughs> item, please. Yeah. Is this the new um, the new Alan Dale joke of the week? Shutters. <laughs> Precisely. Yeah. But Eric, um, speaking of sp- investing 10 hours into a TV show, I am still watching American Horror Story 1984. Um, I am three episodes in. The fourth aired last night. I haven't watched it yet. But I think I'm on board with this season because it is just so stupid. It's so unbelievably ridiculous. And and I, I love the nurse Rita character. Um, if I can go into her a bit, I just, I love this actress so much. And she's just like, oh, oh, well, so funny. If I could go into her a little bit. Oh, wow. Nathan picked up on one. That's pretty good. <laughs> nice. Nice. I think that's funnier than my little slip up there. <laughs> but if I could just speak of this actress a little bit, I just think she outshines everyone in the show. Um, although I do also love the, uh, I think Justin talked about this Alf air, the, uh, Chet character, the, um, the actor playing him is, um, well, let's just say he's probably the lesser of the, uh, the cast. Uh, but he's, he's a lot of fun to watch this show. I mean, this season is just, uh, unbelievably stupid. I mean, you got so much going on. All these characters have the, these like unbelievable backstories. Like one character was involved in a wedding massacre. And then five months later, she's stalked by the night stalker. And then another character uh, ended up killing a frat guy by pushing a car off a cliff. I mean, it's just so ridiculous. And then they they all kind of convene at this camp and then there's two serial killers. And normally I'd be like, okay, this is just too much. But, you know, I, I kind of went into it with a mindset of, okay, this is just so over the top and ludicrous. Just kind of go with it and enjoy it. And on that note, I'm having a lot of fun with this season. Um, not enough to go back and watch the previous seasons, but I am enjoying this a lot. So 
there's that. Cool. Has anyone else caught up with it yet? Uh, Nathan, you still watching yeah. it? Oh, yeah. And Derek, you are as well, aren't you? I am, yeah, because it's showing on Fox over here. Um, I'm probably less enthusiastic. I, the problem I had with the the, fir- the only season of American Horror Story I've watched is that it was kind of, I said before, one episode of setup and then nine episodes of treading water before sort of an inconclusive conclusion, an unsatisfying conclusion. And uh, I'm feeling the same vibe from this one. I enjoyed the first episode. Then episodes two and three, I feel, are they're just meandering as it, I've as uh, Joseph was saying, it, it's it's just over the top and ludicrous, and every character is is quirky in some way. Um, I'm intrigued to see where it goes. I'll stick with it. It, it because it's set in 1984. It's it's luring me in somewhat. Had it not had it been set in more contemporary times, maybe I would have given up at this stage. But yeah, I'm kind of enjoying it. I guess. Cool. Okay. Well, thank you. I'm I'm uh, no, sorry, Nathan. Did you? I've watched the first three episodes. I haven't watched the one that aired last night yet, but. Mm. I'm kind of like Joseph. I mean, I was feeling the way Eric was with episode two. I was kind of just getting to where I was like, eh, I don't know how they're going to stretch this out over the rest of this series. But then I saw episode three and it has just got some of the most ridiculous, like ludicrous twists. And I'm just like, okay, this is just so dumb. I think I could stick with it just because of how ludicrous the whole thing is. And so um, I'm really enjoying it um, at the moment. I am as well. I I, I really like the the touch without any spoilers um really it's not a spoiler but uh, uh how they incorporate the kind of cliches or tropes of the slasher movie the 80s slasher movie into into it and in in uh, part three they have the uh well it is a slight spoiler but not really a major spoiler is that they have the uh the kind of the joke playing trio of um uh, people turning up to play a, 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 you know a joke that goes wrong on the on the main cast so they got, i think they really got that down to um a fine art really and especially with like the um with the uh the guy that was just going along because he he wanted um, to be popular and things like that so it's very much playing on those kind of 80s movies uh things so and also i, I think i said saying off air it's almost like every half an hour or so like like twice an episode there's a there's a twist that's uh or a sidewinder that is kind of, uh, you know, would be worthy of being at the end of the initiation or something. Uh, so I, I, they're having a lot of fun with it, and I think the cast is having fun with it. And so far, at the moment, it looks like it is going to go off on lots of different tangents, and I think you just got to accept that because it's American Horror Story. It's not going to be a... Uh, 10 you know 10 hour slasher movie completely but at the moment i'm enjoying it so i'm going to stick with it and see where it goes and i enjoyed the other american horrors uh horror um story uh seasons i've seen admittedly it's only been the first one and hotel which i watched all the way through but uh yeah so i'm definitely going to stick with it so uh yeah so it's american horror story um yeah just to clear hmm. something i said in the last episode it was only going to be six episodes it is actually 10 sorry wikipedia just hadn't you know updated properly so uh, there is 10 episodes so it's whatever that 450 minutes or whatever so that is uh, five six nearly six hours right okay Excellent. All right. Well, thank you, Joseph. Anything else? No, not really. I mean, we did watch Final Destination 5 in 3D last night. Um, kind of makes me want to, you know, pick back up and do that series. I, I know we covered the first one. Arguably, they're not really slasher films, but, you know, that's never stopped us before. But I think that's it for recently seen this week. Cool. Okay. Thank you, Joseph. Uh, Nathan, how about you? Um, I watched uh, the remake of The House on Haunted Hill, the one from 1999. Mm. I'd seen it back in 1999, so it had been um, 20 years ago that I saw it. And so um, me and Wes just randomly picked it to watch. And I thought it was fun. It was just ludicrously over the top. Just popcorn horror that Joseph was talking about. Um, You know, turn your brain off and just watch and enjoy. And as you guys know, I really enjoyed the remake of The Haunting. Um, and I thought this one was actually even a little bit better than that one. So. What's, what was, what's this film? You're ta- I thought it was The Haunting you were talking about. What is it? The House on Haunted Hill. Oh, remake. this is the one with Jeffrey Rush in it, is it? Mm. I think so. Okay, so William uh, William Malone, I think, directed that, didn't he? Mm. Yeah, so yeah, I remember that being quite good. In the, I saw that in the cinema. I haven't seen it since. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I remember the, the House on Haunted Hill remake was fun. The Haunting remake was, was fucking garbage. Yes. Oh, I liked it. Yeah. We talked about that before, didn't we? I saw it at the cinema and I and I've, I've sat there. And it's one of those films where you sit there being a bit embarrassed to actually be in there. Yeah. <laughs> you were embarrassed to watch it. I think I went I was. twice in the theater. I was. My <laughs> yeah. God. Was yeah, but terrible. that's you. That's you, Nathan. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 
I just remember sitting there and they, just watching it and thinking, because The Haunting, the original Haunting, is one of my favourite horror movies, and then that that was just so bloated and over the top. Uh, yeah, I, I couldn't, I haven't seen it since. But the uh, House on Haunted Hill remake, I, I really enjoyed. I've got the DVD somewhere, I haven't seen that for a while, but uh, I have caught up with it since 1999. So, uh, Nathan, is there anything yes. else? Yes, I was also, I guess, really into the whole late 90s, early 2000s kick at the moment, so I also watched Terror Tracked. Have you guys seen that? It's the one no. with John Ritter showing people houses, and each house has its own scary story. Oh, uh, you know, I've seen it. Yep. The I, I like all the stories in it. I definitely do. But to me, the best are the wraparound story with um, John Ritter because he's amazing in this film, especially the end. <laughs> he is great in this ending. Yes. Um, but I also love the third story, the Granny Killer, where it's yeah. like this like maniac in a old hag mask is going around like killing women and saying stuff like be a good girl and come to granny and it's just just it's very creepy um so i highly recommend this one because i think you'll love the third story at least and that wraparound story what does the is it it's it's, is that a play on tract is it is that something to do with houses in america yeah like tract homes and what what is that exactly i never i've heard of the movie i've never seen it but i I didn't quite get the reference it's a bit lost on us i think like tract homes it's like a neighborhood where all the houses are kind of like within very very close proximity of one another and it's like a just a huge kind of like cul-de-sac of like sameness all the houses look the same and they're all like priced the same and they're just kind of uh okay so a bit uh, they're, like they're, they're kind of the, marketed towards people who are just quickly looking for a house and okay not, so a bit like a lot of those kind of uh, like the ones in poltergeist where they they show like endless yeah. cul-de-sacs kind of thing or not okay. landing or not landing yeah nice. kind of like that um and on, on the next episode of uh the real estate continues we're going to be talking about how you can maximize your profits in a in a small um uh, building in a in a centralized location so i want to talk about escrow mm. yeah i want to talk about escrow i don't know what it means really but i want to talk about it just... quite well, I hear... frankly i would rather talk about real estate than what we're about to talk about <laughs> well i hear that i hear eric's got semi <laughs> detached house. In an apartment oh okay sorry i got that wrong i've never had a semi in my life <laughs> So, <laughs> uh, Nathan, um, is that you done, or you have you got anything else to wax lyrical? No, that, that's me done. Oh, okay. Well, thank you very much, uh, yeah. Eric. How about you? Okay, just one thing from me, because uh, it is only a week since we recorded. I saw Midsummer on the re- recommendation of Meep, mm. who joined us on the podcast the last time out. Um, so the reviewers, the reviews for this one kind of put me off because it looked like it was going to be a, a pretentious, uh, we're not really a horror film type of horror film. Um, so I was surprised at how upfront and center the horror elements were in it when I watched it. Now, I watched the theatrical version, which is only two, well, only two and a half hours, whereas one Meep was watching is the director's cut, which is almost three three hours but uh yeah i was surprised at just how um you know very it's very wicker man which is a good thing um you know it's it's very much a horror film i don't understand how all these critics were like oh it's it's sort of beyond horror it's like the ultimate breakup movie and uh, no it's not really it's a horror film you know 100 percent um it's got some really intense sequences in it. There's um, there's a, a ritual that, well, obviously the setup is that these American kids visit this cult, for want of a better word, in Sweden, and uh, two of them there are to are there to do their thesis on this cult and blah 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 blah. But um, the things they witness there freak them. Well, they you'd think they'd freak them out, but they still stay. Like an hour into the film, which is about uh, you know forty percent of the the movie has gone at this stage, they witness something really horrific, and yet they don't you know decide to pick the, pick up and, and get out of there, which is quite un- it's quite implausible in that way. Very implausible, in fact, because you know from the very start this cult is very sinister and you know something peculiar is going on with them from the very start and i would be out there in a shot and these kids who are university students don't twig to get out there when they can and uh yeah so it has a very gloom kind of a gloomy atmosphere it's 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 probably not as depressing well it's definitely not as depressing as hereditary but it is as intense and uh there's some incredibly graphic gory sequences in it um particularly one that involves these two 72 year old the age does matter and you'll know when you see it 72 year old sort of cult members um so yeah some scenes in it are just really unforgettable but i thought it was really enjoyable it's a bit too long obviously at two and a half hours um but i was surprised at how much i enjoyed it because i don't really like and uh, these films that are borderline art house or you know trying to not be horror when they are horror um 
Yeah, so I mean, the it, as I said, not as depressing as Hereditary. The 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 horror horror scenes in it are are just that little bit far fetched that you that they don't become disturbing or nasty in any way. So uh, I would recommend the film to you guys um, because uh, yeah, I I actually really quite enjoyed it and it has stuck with me since um, I saw it uh, at the weekend. Yeah. <sighs> I saw it as well. No. Yeah. What did you think? I really enjoyed it. I think actually if any of the any of us out of the podcast would get something out of it, it would be Nathan and Joseph and I think you might know why, Eric. Well, I know that I know that Nathan would get something very nice out of it. Yes. Um let's just say that a ma- a man that Nathan might like uh, is liberated from his trousers for quite a prolonged period of time. Hmm. Oh, it wasn't that actually I was thinking of. Although I'm <laughs> yeah, sure you no, would enjoy that. Would you- <laughs> no, I was thinking about the I mean it's all you know they're all taking drugs and all that sort of having kind of... Oh, of things, course, yes. Yeah. So they take hallucinogenic... I'm not hallucinogen. a goddamn drug addict, Justin. <laughs> I just like marijuana from time to time. And from time to time, I mean on a daily basis. <laughs> yeah, so I know what it's like. Yeah, when there you... is, there's lots of trippy drug sequences in it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, um, I, I'm i going to bite the bullet, and I'm probably going to watch that uh, after this weekend. I, everyone keeps telling me to watch it, so I'm just going to I think you'll enjoy it. Yeah. It's more popcorn-y than I thought it would be, so yeah. I think you might enjoy it. <laughs> Hmm. Well, I, I trust your opinion, Eric. So, although uh, when I announce what I'm going to pick on the next one, you you seem to you seem to hate this film. Although, although maybe you'll you'll change your mind. It has been I a might. while. It has been 15 but, years. So, uh, yeah, but uh, I, I take your I'll take your word for it. I'll watch Midsummer after this weekend. Cool. Okay. Yeah, I I really liked it. I thought um, I liked Hereditary, and you know, it's like you say, it's not as dark as Hereditary. In fact, actually, visually as well, it's everything. Well, apart from the the start of the movie, which is set at night, everything else is set in like blistering sunlight, isn't it? Because I think it's in midsummer in in Sweden where they yeah. only have like two. It looks hours. a bit like Lanzarote. Well, apart from it's very green. Yeah, but um, Lanzarote. Lanzarote. That's what Lanzarote. Nathan called it. Lanzarote. Yeah, oh, yeah, I did. But I know what it means now. Yeah. See, I yeah. learn. <laughs> Lanzarote. 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 But I think Lanzarote yeah. crossed with Ireland. Mm. Yes. Sounds but, like a. It sounds like a sports car. Justin lives in a sports car. <laughs> well, <clears throat> sometimes it feels like my life is well running away with me, and uh, especially after I spent. Uh, almost two hours watching uh the film we're discussing um <laughs> so but uh yeah just very quickly with it uh is that everything for you eric that's it yeah mm-hmm. that's it okay no i was going to say i really enjoyed midsummer i thought it was i'd say i enjoyed hereditary um and uh i didn't i kind of knew where this is going because it's got that kind of wicker man vibe but without i'm not going to spoil anything to what happens but i think it's pretty much uh it's kind of i'd, I'd like the it has that kind of underlying dread throughout it even though it's not really it's not kind of not heavy dread but as you know everything's slightly off um and it kind of goes to kind of kind of where i was expecting in some ways i kind of guess but i you know yeah. you couldn't really predict the the actual what actually Did happens you, at the end. were you sort of shouting at the screen like why the hell are you still there well i think they've American gone to students. they've gone to study their, their this this cults kind of uh, all their all their mm. kind of stuff hadn't they so um it seemed that some of them at least kind of knew some of the more extreme bits but not all of them mm-hmm. but yeah i mm-hmm. don't want to give too much away so uh, i'd be interested to hear what you think uh, joseph next time and maybe nathan if you get a chance to watch it so the the only thing i've caught up with apart from midsummer and american horror story was a uh, a little film i'd never heard of before uh, which i quite enjoyed it was called the boat um from uh this year or last year i think and in fact actually when i was looking looking up uh, amanda reyes had uh, reviewed it for um, a film fest um, last year i think so it's it's essentially it's kind of like the the ocean equivalent of christine john Carpenter's christine some degree it's um it only has one person in it this main actor who um he's in off he's staying or he's in Malta is a place which I've visited in in the Med Mediterranean, and he he goes out on a little little boat, little fishing boat, and then he finds an abandoned um, sort of pleasure cruiser, sort of like yacht, uh, like the Mary Celeste, and he goes aboard um, uh, in this fog, and then uh, all these kind of weird things start happening, and it's it eventually appears without giving too much away because I won't say which what actually happens is the the boat itself is the other character in the movie, and it's either haunted or it's got some. It's a bit like it's reminding me of Christine in so much that it it kind of acts in this kind of way that it's to sort of keep him aboard or to either try and kill him or play with him, and so the whole film is him trying to get off this boat and get back to dry land or get rescued, 
and being foiled at every step by this boat. Uh, so it's an effect. It's kind of it reminded me of a few other films. I mean, Christine was one of them. The other one was the the, the Spanish film uh, short film, The Telephone Box, where I don't know if you've seen that. I think we talked about it before. It's like a seventies one where a man gets caught uh, trapped in a telephone box and then gets taken back to this. Uh, it's kind of this kind of Kafkaesque nightmare. So this isn't as good as that, but it's it's certainly got its its moments and it, having this kind of uh just single character throughout 90 minutes i did think it might stretch you know um uh be a a bit of a bit of a slog but actually it's it works pretty well and it's quite an insanely little movie um uh so uh yeah and and you guys heard of that one no but it sounds a bit like speed (laughs) too yes but not quite doesn't doesn't crash into a pier at the end with uh sandra bullock uh it doesn't have Willem Dafoe's teeth. No. Mm. Uh, I always thought it was funny, that Speed 2, wasn't it? Because they sort of said, I think, I can't remember who's somebody, maybe it was Jan, was Jan de Bont. Did he d- direct that as well? Because someone was saying, yes. how, yeah, how so, fast yeah. can you go in a boat uh, on a, in a, on a, you know, a big boat like that? You can't really go that fast, can you? No. So it's not very speedy. So, okay. Well, unfortunately, uh, I was going to mention, actually, you could probably, I don't, you might hear it throughout the intro, but uh, Martino was in the litter tray scratching around through almost the entirety of that intro to uh, rob zombies halloween i didn't know no didn't know so. very very fitting yes well rob zombie reinvents the ultimate slasher classic unleashing michael myers for a bloody roller coaster of a rampage like fans have never seen including a retelling of the original story that unfolds at a breakneck pace as well as a chilling new introduction that finally reveals the secrets behind myers disturbing childhood halloween breathes new life into one of film history's most terrifying tales it will leave you speechless and uh, indeed, it will leave you speechless. Uh, and the trailer promised us there a unique vision of a legendary tale. And this film certainly is unique. Uh, so it's no real secret that I actually really absolutely hate this film. And indeed, all of Rob Zombie's films that I've seen, I've only seen the first four he did. So the two Halloweens, House of a Thousand Corpses and The Devil's Rejects, I had to give up at that stage because I didn't just dislike all four of the movies. I hated with a passion all four movies. Uh, For me, he only has one trick up his sleeve, and I don't like that trick. His films all take place in this potty mouth, redneck, alternate version of reality that I have no interest in watching. Um, So... The for me, this is most apparent in the absolutely appalling first hour of this film, which is the Michael Myers origin story. It's a story that we didn't need to know. You know, having Michael as this enigmatic, mysterious character is what made the series work, particularly the first two. But even in weaker installments like parts four and six, um, you know, Michael is still this sort of silent, mysterious character who lurks in the background and is kind of effective that way. Here, Rob Zombie casts what I can only describe as a young Jodie Foster as young Michael. And then he throws every serial killer cliche in the book. You know, he was bullied at school. His mom was a stripper. His stepfather says the F word a lot and has long, greasy hair. It's it's almost like it was written by a 13-year-old. Um, and it's just like that first hour is just screeching, shouting rednecks, hurling obscenities and sexually violent threats at each other, whilst the baby continuously cries in the background. And I don't know what he's trying to achieve. He's trying to be confrontational, I suppose, and to create a, a sense of unease. But for me, like the, maybe the first three or four minutes of the film are just hilarious because I'm like aghast that somebody could think that this is a good film and this is a good script and this is good dialogue but it quickly becomes incredibly tedious and really really annoying and unfortunately the bulk of the film is is at a similar pitch and the, the, like we were watching the director's cut of the film which is just pushing two hours I can't remember what the theatrical version was if it's much long, if much shorter or not I, I can't remember but the prequel section of the film for me is the real problem with the film because it's it, as i said it's just unrelentingly shrill and it's not in any way interesting you're given no characters to root for you're given torture porn style kills rape non-stop swearing shouting screaming and just all these unlikable characters and it it's embarrassing to watch like you were saying um justin you were almost embarrassed to be in the cinema watching the haunting remake like i'm i'm embarrassed for humanity watching this halloween <laughs> remake because i'm just aghast that somebody would make this 
rubbish. Um, and then finally, at the hour mark, we get to what is the remake section. And lo and behold, we're introduced to some characters that kind of resemble human beings. Hooray! Like the new girls who play, you know, the new actresses playing Laurie, Linda, and Annie. I suppose are kind of likable and they're a breath of fresh air compared to what we've had up to this point. Now they're not absolutely brilliant. I mean, I kind of, you know, they've, they've updated Laurie for the 21st century. You know, she's still smart and responsible, but she now she's, she's a bit more playful and has a sarcastic edge to her, which I kind of like. It makes her friendship with Annie, Annie and Linda that bit more plausible. Um, and the new Tommy and Lindsay are, are quite likable, but, but, this section of the film only lasts about 10 minutes and then it cut, and then it reverts back to screaming and screeching and um, loud noises and shaky camera work. Um, so the, like the, the only bit of restraint in the film is it's, it's so brief in the middle of it. Um, I thought, although I thought Laurie's parents were kind of likable as well, particularly Dee Wallace, um, you know, anything she's in, I think she's a really likable presence. Uh, and I felt her death was kind of cruel. It's very prolonged, which is something that you didn't really get in the previous Halloween movies. Uh, again, this is made sort of post-Saw and post-Hostel, so all the victims tend to suffer that bit longer, whereas in, you know, the Halloween and Friday the 13th formula is that, you know, surprise, it's Michael Myers and then somebody's killed. Whereas here, he sort of stabs them repeatedly and they try and crawl away and he catches up with them and hits them and throws them against things and it's it just, it's more sadistic and for me, I prefer my films to be that bit more popcorn and to not have a nasty edge, but to be fun. Um, I had zero interest in the Loomis character and Sheriff Brackett. Um, I thought they were just, I, I think Michael Mc, uh, Malcolm McDowell's portrayal of Loomis in this and in the sequel, I, I just think he's a really unlikable character. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, Linda, Annie, they start off nice, but then I end up having no sympathy for them. I don't know why. I think because they, they turn all sweary and horrible and it just it gives me flashbacks to the opening half of the film. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. I don't understand why Rob Zombie thinks that people have to swear, uh, you know, every second word. I mean, the the amount of swearing is is just laughable in this film. And that's why I, when I was compiling the intro, I just took out all the swear words. I didn't even, tr you know, when I'm doing the intros to the films I choose, I try and maybe make it representative and, you know, give you indication of what the plot might be about. But in this case, I just took out all the swear words, threw them into a 90 second clip and went there. That's what I think of Halloween 2007. Because to me, it's just a, a blur of swear words for two hours uh, and, and screaming. And it's, like, the film is boring. The film is really boring. I'm aghast that the film has such a high rating on IMDb. I think it was, I think I read 6.1 out of 10 based on over 100,000 reviews. Because I just, like, there, there are films I don't like, but I can see why other people like them. But with Halloween 2007, I just can't see what, what anyone would get out of the film at all. I just think it, but as I said, it's, it's just really, really boring because the film is so tedious and it hits one note in the opening minute and it stays on that note for two hours. Um, so, yeah, I absolutely hate this film. It's one of the most poorly written films I've ever seen. And we were discussing this beforehand, but I think I would rate Axum as a better movie. And that's all I have to say on the matter. Joseph. Well, I was researching uh, Mr. Cummings. That's Rob Cummings, uh, Rob Zombie. And he seems like a very good guy. You know, he's a vegan. He, he abhors violence. He's, you know, all for equality. And he has a genuine love of horror films. Um, I've seen him in some interviews where he, he kind of has this almost this insecure standoffish nature about him where he, he, he folds his arms over his chest and he, he kind of shies away from being asked questions. And he's, he, he almost seems like a child, um, a likable kind of funny child. And so it pains me to say, you know, to talk bad about someone who seems like a genuinely good person. Um, it pains me to say that his movie is complete and utter horseshit. I hate this movie so much. I, I just watched it before the show and this is the first time I'd seen it since it was released in, uh, theaters back in 2007. And it is just abhorrent. It, it's, it's, I, I don't even have the words to describe it. Like the, the opening hour, where we get to know Michael. Um, I think what Rob Zombie is trying to do here is, um, well, for starters, I like the idea that, you know, Michael just goes on a, you know, he just kills his, uh, sister for no reason whatsoever. I think that is scary. I think, uh, the, you know, not knowing why someone did something they did is just infinitely more terrifying than what is essentially, uh, just the story of Michael becoming another statistic. I mean, I think, I think that is just sad. I think, I think, 
I, I think there's no, you know, there's no popcorn joy in this, in this, there's no, there's nothing scary about it. It's just sad. It's, it's just another kid who was abused and there's no joy in it. And the, the, the full hour leading up to Michael killing, it's a lot of, like Eric said, it's a lot of screaming um, in the director's cut. There is a, a, a vile, disgusting, just absolutely repugnant rape scene that has no business being in this film um, or in any film, really. I mean, it's just, it's not fun whatsoever. And I'm not saying, hey, you know, people shouldn't include stuff like this. You know, I think, you know, as artists should be able to do whatever they want, you know, more power to you. But it's just not fun. I, I had no joy watching this. You know, when they finally get to the, the, the suburb portion and they kind of remake Halloween, essentially, even the even the the, the, the middle class portion of the film feels kind of carnival sideshowy and white trashy. And it's just it's so grating. And I, I uh, this movie is just it makes my skin crawl just thinking about it. I hate it so much. The shaky cam, the screaming, the cursing. Um, there's no likable characters. And for me, you know, I could forgive the shaky cam. I could forgive the over the top violence if there were just one character that I could root for. And I could not root for a single person in this film. It all boils down to characters for me. And I did not like a single character in this movie. Ergo, I did not like this movie. And I would rather not talk about this movie ever again um, <laughs> or anything of Rob Zombie's films. I mean, the guy is a nice guy. I, you know, more power to him to make as many movies as he wants wants make as uh many 31s or halloween twos as he likes you know go off and do whatever you want rob but um i think after we cover this and we cover halloween two next year i'm done um i i I have no interest in anything you're going to do uh no offense to you guy but boy this was an endurance test Mm, yes i would agree and um, i mean it's a shame if if, uh, rob zombie does come across as a nice guy on the extras and that and but yeah uh, of the four films i've seen i've hated every single second of each one and i know the devil's rejects has its fans as well as halloween but they're just not for me i've i should have mentioned i've seen his halloween uh, remake about five times now i reckon and i it's still like i hate i hate it more every time i watch it it just gets worse and worse for me um nathan what do you think um well i'll I'll say this that um i I tried this time i was thinking to myself okay put the original halloween like completely out of your mind and just watch this one like as it you know uh, as a standalone film and and try to give it you know as fair of a shot as i could um i mean i don't think that the entire movie is terrible i think that i agree with eric um the there's a, a good like small portion in the middle where you're getting to know Lori and Annie and Linda and stuff and and I would be more interested in watching them and I think that a big mistake is the fact that like Linda gets what three minutes of screen time overall and mm. I mean Annie doesn't get much more really so I, I don't know I just feel like w- one thing that I was more interested in is you know the the, the three main girls and I just feel like they're kind of secondary. Uh, especially when we're not even introduced to Lori until the halfway mark of the film. And I'm like, I just don't, didn't really care for, you know, not meeting the, you know, slasher movie final girl, quote unquote, until the halfway mark, Uh, especially, uh, you know, one as iconic as Lori Strode. I mean, she's like an iconic final girl. Um, So I, you know, was more interested in seeing that. And I feel like the first, um, hour, it just it it starts to get so draggy and and, and dull that the pacing is is very slow to me. Um, and I'm you know I I'm not a, a vulgar person myself necessarily, uh, but I'm not against cussing or anything. I mean it's you know fine you know you do you, but um, oh, it's boobies. <laughs> is boobies a cuss word? If it is, I just cussed. Um, I think that my problem here is that um, you know. So, so it, it's it's too much like it's overdone um i've never met anybody that cusses this much and i live with one of the biggest cussers on the planet so, <gasps> poor wes he is <laughs> <laughs> but um i don't know it's it's just it just it's it's very grating i think that in all honesty the stepfather uh played by is it william forsyth plays the stepfather I yes mm-hmm. um, yep that character is not just an awful human being, but so annoying that 
I was ready for him to die like the very first scene with him. And it's not just because he was, you know, an, a, a bad person, but he was so annoying. Like he had to say something about anything that went on around him. It didn't matter what it was, anything unrelated to him. And he was just disgusting. Um, I was glad to see him die. I actually felt that his death was too easy, um, especially thinking of this is a Rob Zombie movie. I was like, that guy should have got a way worse death. But yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm with uh, Eric. I, I don't find Dr. Loomis likable in this one at all. I, I just I felt he was I don't know. I just kind of felt he was kind of a scumbag himself to me. I don't know why. I mean, I don't think he necessarily does anything outright evil in the movie. I just didn't like him. Um, I think that's my uh, that's my biggest problem with Rob Zombie movies is that I always feel like the ratio of likable characters to despicable ones is way off. Like he'll have like a tiny handful of characters that you can like, but everybody else is just awful, like disgusting, terrible human beings. And it just doesn't really work for me. Um, I I find it more unpleasant than anything else. And you guys know that I've always said I'm more of a Friday the 13th series kind of horror fan. I Mm -hmm. love the, you know, the crazy kills, but they're more instantaneous. I, I don't really have fun when you linger on the suffering of people. It, I don't know. It, it takes the, a fun aspect out of it. And I'd rather just kind of have fun with cheesy horror than, watch stuff that's trying to be more realistic, but just the brutality is just a bit much. Uh, I just don't have fun with that. And uh, in all honesty, I think that my biggest problem with this movie is um, one, it's, it's, it's too long, like a runtime of two hours. It's like, Whoa, you need to trim that film down a little bit, but also it's just not a likable film. I, I don't know. I, I, I tried to, you know, to be more positive about it this time. I really did, but I just still don't, like it that much um and you know i said i wasn't going to compare it to the original but in all honesty it took everything i loved about the original and just did away with it um and uh that's just not my kind of thing uh i prefer the mysterious michael myers um, i had a lot more fun with uh the original of course so i mean that's my opinion um unfortunately i wish i could have been more positive that's okay um Finally, we've had a movie you don't like. Wow. <laughs> that's unusual. Um, well, no, I didn't like Silent Rage. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. Uh, I now, would agree wait, as well. wait a minute. Wait a minute. You like this better than Silent Rage? No, I prefer Silent Rage. Yeah, I prefer Silent Rage. Rage. <laughs> um, yeah, one of the things I, I noted down as well, Nathan, to agree with something you said there, I prefer, I, I said I would have preferred if the violence had been more outlandish and unrealistic, like, you know, squeezing somebody's head till their eyeball pops out, that type of, yeah. of, of kill. I would have liked, um, because... To, the sadistic, sorry, nature of the of the murders in this just makes it grim as well as as boring and noisy and tedious and horrible. But William Forsyth, I agree a hundred percent. He's the he's the most annoying thing in a very annoying movie. He, it's just uh. you know what's sad is that Rob Zombie's casted a lot of people that I actually like. I mean, I love William Forsyth. I I love Ken Foray. I mean, uh, Danny Trejo. I mean, he's a likable character in the film actually. But he casts a lot of people that I genuinely like and I think are good actors. But they always play scumbags, and I don't understand his fascination with these these people, these subhuman people that you would not only would you go out of your way to avoid them if you saw them crossing the street, but you probably run them over well and you know i want to say this because you guys were mentioning some of his other films um the you know house of a thousand corpses and devil's rejects uh i didn't i hate them as like, like i did this movie um but i find a lot of people saying stuff like oh you know i was kind of rooting for the killers in those movies and stuff and and um to me, I'm like, I, I, I just don't because I don't find them likable at all. Like, I don't even find the victims likable. So I think my problem is I just find that I don't care who wins between the killers and the victims. I'm just like, maybe they should all just kill each other until nobody's left. Mm-hmm. I would agree. <laughs> Uh, 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 Justin well uh, I think it's fair to say in my view of it would be it's more of a migraine than a movie um, yep I yeah I, I didn't like it at all I mean my history with the movie and um, like uh, uh, on sort of uh, messenger we sort of sent I saw I was in Los Angeles at the time the the film was premiering at the Chime, uh, Chinese the Grandman's Chinese Theatre, <clears throat> and I suddenly thought, oh my god, how exciting! I wonder if I can get a ticket. And obviously, I couldn't get a ticket, um, but I was actually quite glad I hadn't because uh, talking about being embarrassed in the the cinema, I think if I'd actually seen this in the cinema, I would have died of shame, especially dragging someone else along to see it. Um, 
it's it, I, I love in you know, Halloween. It's no secret. The original 1978 version is one of my favorite, if not my favorite movie of all time. And I have a respect for people who do things differently. I mean, sometimes you have you have remakes which so slavishly uh, recreate things that it becomes uh, redundant. Uh, so, uh, you know, the idea of getting into doing a, like a, a remake where you go in and with a literally a battering ram and destroy everything that was cherished about the original, um, you know, in some ways it could be, you know, it, it could be uh, applauded or saluted. Um, but in this case, it's just so shrill and unpleasant. And I actually remember because I was watching this and I was thinking, I have seen this before. So I did watch it when it came out on DVD or however, however I saw it back in uh, late 2007, early 2008. And I realized I hadn't seen the end of the movie. And then it came back to me in this kind of flashback of kind of I remember why. And it got to the point where I was watching um, uh, uh, Danielle Harris's character, um, the Annie Brackett character, uh, on the floor, topless, covered in blood, screaming. Uh, and it kept on flashing back to her. And it just felt quite degrading. And I'm not a prude. You know, I love slash movies. I love blood and guts. I like nudity. I'm not a prude about nudity or violence or blood. But it felt so exploitive in the worst possible way to have you know, this woman sort of just lying on the floor, squirming and screaming, covered in blood, constantly going back to her, this Michael Myers ca- uh, character, toying with her, um, not killing her, just but just for the audience's pleasure. And it just felt icky to me. And I remember at the time we turned it off at that point. I just thought, I don't really, I'm not getting any pleasure from this. This isn't fun. This isn't a popcorn movie. I've sat through hoping it was going to get better. And it, you know, I think... I agree what was being said earlier it's kind of the first hour is is repugnant and just kind of completely devoid of any entertainment value whatsoever because there's not a single interesting well not interesting likable character apart from the kind of sherry moon character who's the only person really in that part of the movie who's painted as any way sympathetic and then she blows her brains out later so you've got this kind of you know it destroys everything that's um artful or mysterious or kind of supernatural whatever it is you want to talk about the original halloween it just completely destroys it with a sledgehammer and like michael myers becomes you know he's not the boogeyman he's like a demolition man by the end of the movie going around this this uh this this house chasing laurie strode and literally just pulling it apart he you know i i find it particularly problematic that um uh, rod zombie uh, you know this idea that he wanted to create this kind of almost semi-serious and i kind of use that in you know massive air quotes um uh, exploration of a serial killer so michael myers is not this kind of previously nice young boy who's become a uh this hulking monster or kills his sister and uh, uh he he he's or he's a budding serial killer for no particular reason he's already mutilating and murdering animals to start at the start of the movie um he's not a nice character he's not a nice character who's gone bad he's um but then throughout the movie it's almost he plays this thing this kind of this idea that he's this kind of little boy even when he's a grown man that he's still kind of is there's some good in him uh, which, you know, it's, I just find, you know, it's just ridiculous and offensive, really. And I think, but Rob Zombie has his cake and eating by having uh, Michael Myers, he wants him to become this kind of serial killer, this kind of flesh and blood man, even though he turns into this kind of golem, this massive man monster, um, who's this hulking beast. Uh, um, but he's also unkillable. So you've got this this idea that he's trying to create this white trash serial killer, uh, who's also unkillable and so you can't have your cake and eat it rob zombie you can't you know you he either he has this kind of supernatural thing it's sort of set around halloween the ghouls and the ghosts and the sam Hain and whatever it all those things that left unsaid in john carpenter and deborah hill's halloween but the idea behind that is that michael you don't know michael myers is the boogeyman but in this he's not the boogeyman at all he's just some hulking arsehole in a giant in a in a mask and uh, it's and you know uh I thought the Dr. Loomis character, all of the stunt casting just took me out of it as well. And I kept on thinking all these people could be in a better movie. They're all, you know, they've all done great cult movies in their time and they deserve better. You know, having this kind of stunt casting throughout it is a love letter to these other cult horror movies with these people were in them like Udo Kier and Suspiria and all these people that, you know, Ken Forey, Dawn of the Dead, I mean, you know, Danny Trejo, all these kind of characters, but they, they were in search of a better movie. Um, 
uh, so it just felt cynical, um, debased, um, and not particularly interesting, really. It's, it's like you said, it sounded like it felt like a, a, a Halloween movie, a 14 year old um, who'd watched too many Beavis and Butthead uh, reruns would have made. So, in other words, I think it's a mini classic, and I'm so glad we're talking about it today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, oh, it is. It's just so horrible. And, and if we're, if anyone dares accuse us of, um, oh, you don't like it just because it's it's different and veers away from the original Halloween. No, I have no problem with films being different. Um, our sequels going off on tangents if they're in any way entertaining. But this, this is in no way entertaining. I mean, Rob Zombie could have replaced um, Michael Myers with Susie. And if <gasps> it had been a good film, I'd turn around and say it's a good film. But yeah. there are there are numerous remakes that do something completely different that are good. For example, Go see the Maniac remake. Does something completely mm. different, and it is excellent. Like even if you think of sequels like Halloween Three, Blair Witch Two, things that that go off on weird uh, tangents, and um, they're great movies. Uh, I love Blair Witch Two. I think it's so underrated. Well, I agree completely. Did you think just uh, of interest? I mean, I thought the the irony was that I felt the the use of the Halloween uh, music throughout it kind of felt weird because the film was so unlike Halloween, although it was doing this kind of like bad cover version of Halloween for the set, the, the middle part of it. Um, it, it almost, it felt like because he'd gone so off on tangent, he changed it up so much. It would have just been better to not have used the Halloween music at all and just mm. use something else. It felt the Halloween music, it felt out of place in this because it was so artless and so kind of, um, well, it's just so, you know, it, it's so cartoonish. It just didn't really, mm. didn't, it didn't work for me. I, th- I would have preferred it if it just kept reminding me that I could have been watching the original or any of the other sequels, really, apart from part two. Mm. That iconic theme is reduced here to basically saying, hey, you're wasting two hours of your life. Go do something else. Well, it had that, it's that the, you know, the, the theme, it's that like dun 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 dun, you know, that thing with, and in the um, the way it's in the how it kind of accompanies the original film, it's like Michael Myers is this kind of shadow and he's creeping and he's kind of moving sort of like this kind of almost like he's on coasters. He's just moving methodically and there's no emotion. It's just like so it's completely at odds with this 14 foot hulking sort of honey monster stomping around <laughs> ripping down walls you know it doesn't work yeah. it really doesn't work at all um well what, what about if um if the film had uh, got rid of the prequel element and had been a direct remake and it started with a sort of Laurie, linda and annie uh would it have been a better film maybe if we'd had an hour of them you know being stalked by Michael Myers without them realizing, and then Whoa. half an hour of violence would have it would have been a better movie. I'm not saying it would have been a good movie, but it kind of depends what he would have done with those characters because they're all, um, you know, they take it beyond sassy. And they say the, um, uh, you know, the Laurie Strode character, uh, you know, she, I, I kind of the fact is that I know obviously in the sequel she goes complete from the start. It's just kind of complete nihilistic kind of, you know, fuck this, fuck that, fuck everything kind of thing. But I, she's, you know, Scout Taylor Compton, as, as lovely as she is, she's no Jamie Lee Curtis. And I think it's, I can see when you were saying uh, earlier, um, Eric, that the, the fact that she's a bit sassy and, you know, she's fingering a donut in front of her mother and things like that. It kind of, it's almost, you can see why she'd be hanging out with the other girls a bit more. But mm. it kind of felt like she had like resting bitch face throughout the whole of this movie anyway, that they never really... I kind of never got got this kind of nice girl vibe from her particularly. It felt like she was almost champing at the bit to become this kind of, you know, to go off off the deep end. I mean, I think, uh, you know, to give him his due, some of the the, uh, the bits, the chase scenes, because there's a there's a section in this of about five or ten minutes when she she's been chased by him originally round the house that is actually quite well done. I think mean, he's not, you know, it's not badly filmed. When the, the camera stays static for long enough, you can actually work out what's going on. It, you know, a lot of the, the the set design and things like that, the recreation of the um, the houses with you know the Halloween decorations. It's a nicely shot movie when he actually gives himself uh, himself time to breathe. But it kind of just wants to be. He just wants it to be like a corn video or something, or some Slipknot video throughout the rest of it, and it's or a white zombie video. You know, it just doesn't. It's. He, and there is an audience there that you shouldn't forget, we shouldn't forget that there are a lot of people out there who love this movie and all power to them if they can get some enjoyment from it then great but i you know it's not 
not for me. And I do wonder if Rob Zombie, because I haven't seen, um, what's the film he did more recently? The one with the, uh, uh, not the 31, but the one, the kind of one with his wife and it's more of a slight, Lords of Salem. Lords of Salem. Have you seen anyone seen that? No. Yeah, no. I have seen Lords. Of, I've seen Lords of Salem. Mm. Um, it's not bad per se. However, it reminds me of him doing a Roman Polanski film just with more swear words. It's right, it's okay. not as bad as the as mm. the Halloween film, but it's something I'll never watch again. Still, mm. I just it's it's odd, isn't it? I just wonder what you know, Nathan. You hit it on the nail on the head. It's kind of like why you know what's the point of having this so it's entirely nihilistic you all the the whole film is peopled with you know there isn't like a one particularly likable character in this apart from d wallace and um laurie strode's um father i mean everyone else or even like i mean sheriff brackett i mean you know you've got you know you've just kind of wasted these kind of you know what i mean what's he what's the you know what's his i can't remember his name now and um, brad Dourif, what's he even doing in this he doesn't do anything mm. apart from drive a car does no. he you know what's no. the point of having him in it? It's kind of just seems, and you know he gets bumped, he gets killed off, doesn't he? He's fairly, fairly, and like the Danny Tre- Trejo character, he's kind of like he was like Michael Myers' friend, and I know he was probably trying to make out that Michael Myers was this epitome of evil. He was kind of the very essence of evil, but you know when he actually kills his character, you just think you know that's it's what, why why are you doing that? You know. Um, because the weird the whole thing is Michael Myers goes on this killing spree in the sanitarium because a girl gets raped. So he becomes this avenging superhero who then kills everyone. It's it's it doesn't make it doesn't make any sense. But having said that, of course, when we get to the background, um there's been some quite interesting uh revelations about this movie in the last couple of weeks. So is there anything else we want to say about this before we do get onto some uh background? <laughs> I have nothing left to say about this movie <laughs> at all. Uh, I can't think of anything else. What about you, Eric? And do you wanna I would just say that there was a glut of remakes around this time in the late not uh late noughties yeah there was this friday the 13th nightmare on elm street uh none of them are particularly good but this is by far the worst even even the april fool's day remake which also has whatever her name is laurie compton scott taylor thompson twist what's her name <laughs> what's her name again scott taylor <laughs> taylor compton. that's that's it she's in that and, and and even the april fool's day remake which is pretty naff is much better than this yeah. And so you get into films like the House on Sorority Row remake and the Black, even the Black Christmas remake. I thought was you know kind of fun, mm. yeah, Not corny. Well, uh, the, two, the three biggies, yeah, the three biggies: Halloween, yeah. Friday the Thirteenth, Nightmare on Elm Street. All of them were pretty poor, and this is See, no, yeah. Oh, the, 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 worst. the Nightmare on Elm Street was just dull, it's just lifeless. The Friday yeah. the Thirteenth film, it started out really well. It kind of shifted into characters I didn't like. About it's probably the best of the three, but this, I would say, I would agree, yeah. Well, what this about the, is just something mm, something else. There's obviously also the My Bloody Valentine remake as well, which was cause, yeah, cause which I, really I quite liked that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the prom it's night not bad. One, the prom night one was pretty. Uh, that was uh, that was the complete opposite to the Halloween remake. The prom night one was kind of like it's just it's so bland and bland, vanilla. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Still better than this. Yes. <laughs> it's another one I've At never finished. At this point, but. what isn't better than Halloween? Rob yeah. Zombie's Halloween. Mm. I'd rather taste vanilla than a piece of doggy doo-doo. Well, there you go. So, mm-hmm. um, what background? So, uh, Nathan, do you have any background? Yes. Oh. oh! The F word is said 96 times in this film. No, it's said much more than 96. That's uh, what the information I got was 96. Now, you may think that doesn't seem like a lot, but they also use many, many other cuss words as well. So, Yeah, it probably peppers them. It just yeah. doesn't feel as much. Yeah. Wow, that's still a lot. Hmm. Well, thank you, Nathan. Anything, anything else you'd like to tell us about? No. No. Okay. Uh, Joseph, how about you? I just watched the movie like right before we started recording, so that tells you my level of enthusiasm for you know this film. Well, fair enough. What about you, Eric? Okay, I have some bits and bobs here. Um, okay, so I was looking back at old Fangoria's from when this was released. So in their June 2007 issue, as part of the Monster Invasion section, it's where they used to preview upcoming movies. Uh, Rob Zombie said uh, he's bothered by other movies that are just too campy and goofy, so he wanted to make the violence serious and brutal. Uh, and he also states, I believe that for the most part, all remakes are horrible and pointless. Remakes work if someone 
everyone feels they have a vision to truly make it work and not just cash a paycheck, mm, whatever. Um, Dimension were originally looking for another sequel, actually, and that one of the they, uh, one of the three scripts they were considering had a prequel element to it, but it was Rob Zombie's idea himself to remake the original, and Dimension said, well, why don't we mash the two? Why don't we have a bit of a prequel and a bit of a remake? So that's how that started. Um, Rob Zombie says of the prequel portion that uh, this was the way, way to make the horror icon scary again. He was saying that he'd lost his edge, you know, from the more recent sequels at the time, uh, particularly Halloween Resurrection, which I still think is a considerably, it's a masterpiece. Oh, God, so, that movie is yeah. so much better than this movie. In yeah, absolutely. Every conceivable, yeah. every conceivable way, that movie is a million times better than your movie ever will be, Mr. Zombie. <laughs> yeah, even when Michael, sell, what, sell tapes is our staples his head back on, whatever Nathan said about, about Halloween Resurrection. <laughs> it always makes me chuckle when it... Um, uh, so he was saying, yeah, that this was his way of making the horror icon scary again, give him a human backstory and ground everything in reality. And I disagree completely because I think having no background for him makes him more scary. But hey, ho, what do I know? I've never made a movie. Uh, Malik Akkad, who's the producer, says, this is Halloween turned up to 11. I think it's Halloween turned up to 111 myself. Uh, it harks back to more classic horror films where there was a pathos to characters like the Frankenstein monster and Dracula. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he also says Rob Zombie's got his finger on the pulse of what audience wants. Okay, so fil- filming was done in February of March and March of 2007. It was shot in South Pasadena where John Carpenter had filmed the original. So when Laurie notices Michael watching her and the girls when they're at the library, uh, Michael is actually standing in front of Laurie's house from the original film. So there we go. So it was filmed in the same locations. Um, uh, Michael was originally meant to say boo. Uh, to Laurie at the end of the film, uh, as in not Boo to scare her, Boo, because that was her name as a child in, when we see in the prologue. Um, but Zombie felt that this might de- demystify him too much, so he dropped that element. Yeah, that would demystify Michael Myers. Zombie, <laughs> this, this is all. This is all really damning of Rob Zombie. These are all things he said at the time. He says he says uh, he boasts that his Loomis is a much more is much more interesting character, much more intertwined in the story. He accuses the original <laughs> character of just turning up occasionally to say something dramatic. Mm. <laughs> so. The the film was released on August 31st, uh, Halloween, apparently, uh, 2007, grossing 80 million worldwide. It debuted at number one, knocking super bad off the top spot, uh, which is another film I can't abide. Uh, so August 20- 2007 was obviously not the greatest month. Hey, super bad is super bad is totally much better than this film. <laughs> well, I, I would agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> However, audiences plummeted by 63 percent in the second week of release. I think that says it all. Um, famously, a work print version of this film used for test screenings in June 2007 was released onto torrent sites four days before its official opening. Um, Had this not been leaked, then it's assumed that the box office would have been higher. I actually got a copy of that work print version, I remember, before I saw it in the cinema. I can't remember what the quality was like in it or what the differences were, but I remember there was quite significant differences to the eventual eventual theatrical version um as i said the villi- the film holds an unbelievable 6.1 out of 10 on imdb based on over a hundred thousand reviews my god uh, alternate titles include halloween retribution and halloween the beginning uh, actors that were considered for roles emma stone auditioned for the role of laurie strode um danielle panabaker auditioned for the role of laurie strode as well uh, she uh, didn't get it, but two years later, she was cast as the female lead in Friday the 13th, the remake, um, which incidentally scout Taylor Compton had auditioned for but failed to get. Uh, John Hurt was considered for the role of Loomis. And I find this, this is on IMDb, but I find this so difficult to believe. Oliver Stone was considered to direct. Can we believe that? I don't know. Uh, one actor I didn't spot in the movie. I only, I, I, like I've, as I said, I've seen the film about five times. I've never spotted him in it, but apparently Mickey Dolenz from The Monkees is in there. He he's, uh, plays a character who sells guns to Malcolm McDowell's character. Um, I don't remember him in that. Well, I mean, it is, as you were saying, Joseph, it is, it's really star-studded cast. Uh, can, you know, full of genre icons. Brad Dourif and Foray. Um, Malcolm McDowell, obviously, D. Wallace. Um, Adrian Barbeau was in it. Uh, her scene was deleted, but you can see it on the Blu ray. Yes, unbelievably, I have the Blu ray of Halloween 1 and 2 because I bought the Scream Factory box set. That's the only reason I have them. But uh, yeah, Adrian Barbeau was in a scene when um, Loomis goes to the adoption agency and she's kind of the receptionist there. Um, 
there was actually 22 minutes of deleted scenes on the Blu-ray, which means like an alternate version <laughs> oh of this God. film would be two hours and 22 minutes. Can you imagine that? Oh my that? God. Yeah. Um, so there's nothing particularly outrageous or exciting in that. Um, you see Michael killing the grave digger when he goes to dig up his sister's gravestone and uh, there's a few other bits and pieces. You see... Um, Debbie working at the strip club and blah 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 blah. Um, there's an alternate ending. It's it uh, the ending on this version we're watching is considerably longer than the original one because Michael ends up um, being talked out of killing Laurie by Loomis and then all the SWAT team come in and shoot him dead and that's apparently the end of the film. Um, do I have anything else? Uh, yeah, at one point, Dimension were considering, because they own the rights to the Hellraiser franchise as well, they were considering a crossover film between Pinhead and Michael Myers because of the success of Freddy vs. Jason. Um, but I I just can't for the life of me see how that would ever work. <laughs> so <laughs> it, was, it was quickly stomped on. I, I um, would have taken that over this. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. Yeah. Or Michael Myers in space would have been better than this. Uh, and yes. that's all I have for now, uh, Justin. Okay, well, I've just got a couple of things. Um, one thing is I, I, when I was just uh, perusing IMDb, and I didn't realise, but uh, uh, obviously Paul Rudd was uh, Tommy Doyle in uh, Halloween 6, wasn't he? But uh, did you know yeah. the Tommy Doyle in this went on to be a successful actor in the Netflix series? Oh, no, because I actually kind of like the Tommy Doyle in this. He's one of the few redeeming characters. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that is that guy, isn't it? Yeah, Skylar From... Gazondo, who's yeah. in um, Santa What's his Clare. name, sorry? Skylar Gazondo, or Gizondo. Um, but he's, he's in the, Santa Clarita Diet. He is, yeah. Oh. He's the main character. Well, one of the main characters in that. So uh, I didn't realize. So he that must until. be in his 20s now, is he? I, yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So he's he. Uh, so um, yeah, I just I just saw that. But um, yeah, a couple of things. If you look on um, if you look on Google News, um, Rob Zombie has been talking about this movie recently, and the headline uh, screams: Rob Zombie calls working on his Halloween movies a miserable experience. Um, just like his audience, uh, thinking back on it, but (laughs) he, uh, just a a short quote from him. He says, making Halloween with the Weinsteins was a miserable experience for me. And so I was very reticent to do a second one. I did do the second one and I thought, okay, well, the first one was a miserable experience, but it did well. So maybe it'll be easier the second time. It was worse. Oh my God. I felt like they weren't trusting me on the first one because they wanted to make sure it was a hit. And now they weren't trusting me not to fuck up their hit. So you've managed to get a fuck in there. Um, John Carpenter uh, was famously was not a fan of this movie. Uh, And a short quote from him on uh, talking about the 2007 uh, remake and talking about Rob Zombie. And this is uh, quoting John Carpenter. He said he lied to me. He said that I was very cold to him when, when he told me that he was going to make Halloween. Nothing could be further from the truth. I said, make it your own movie, man. This is yours now. Don't worry about me. I was incredibly supportive. Why that piece of shit lied, I don't know. He had no reason to. Why did he do it? So frankly, that will colour my response to the film. If I take that away, I did not. I thought he. Um, I thought he might. Uh, sorry, I thought he might. Sorry, I th- sorry. Put my teeth back in. I thought that he took away the mystique of the story by explaining too much about Michael Myers. I don't care about that. He's supposed to be a force of nature. He's supposed to be almost supernatural, and he was too big. It wasn't normal. Um, so the only other thing I was, I was on, which was quite funny, is you know you always hear about these these movie competitions where you get a walk in role on uh, on a movie, and apparently a woman uh, won uh, a role in it, um, a woman called Heather Bowen, and she played a news reporter who covered Michael's arrest, but a scene was cut from the film and this does not appear in the deleted scenes. So uh, maybe she's thankful for that now. I don't know. But I'd be mega yeah. pissed. Wouldn't you be mega pissed yeah. if you'd won a competition to be in a film and then they cut out your scene, uh, even if you're just in the background and you don't even be getting the deleted scenes? I know. <laughs> I'd be mad as hell. Yeah. yeah. But, of course, after seeing the movie, I'd be like, well, I guess they did me a favour. Mm. Yeah. Um, so apparently I, we're talking about all the other, the, the kind of the vogue for the slasher, um, the big temple slasher remakes of that time. And uh, at Nightmare on Elm Street, which I've still not seen. I've never seen the 2010 version, and I've, I've never felt the inclination to. Maybe it's pants. Yes, it that, is bland. It is so vanilla and bland. Yeah, totally. But, yeah, but that was that made more money than any of the others. It made 63 million in domestic box 
box office uh, compared to uh, the others. And um, the other ones were obviously When a Stranger Calls, it was uh, 47.8 million. Uh, but the Black Christmas remake was only 16 points. Um, uh, 16.3 million the Prom Night remake which is so fucking dreadful was 43.8 million and My Bloody Valentine 3D uh, was 51.4 million so and Friday 13th uh, so it says um, led the rest of the group at 60 million so uh, so they were big box office you know they made a, a lot of money apart from the, obviously the Black Christmas remake which I think probably came out um well, actually, it kind of came out the same uh, same year as when A Stranger Calls. So uh, yeah, it was two thousand and six mm. for the Black Christmas remake. Yeah, and it preempted the kind of uh, My Bloody Valentine and uh, Friday Thirteenth. So, um, but uh, yeah, it's always tricky with knowing when these films whether or not that, how they're going to do because obviously, like Scream Four, when that came out, that kind of not exactly bombed, but didn't do as well as they expected. So it can be quite tricky to sort of work out the timings of these movies. So, uh, but uh, yeah, well, the Halloween, obviously the Halloween franchise, as we know, is now going, you know, it's probably healthier than ever, isn't it really? That we've kind of, I kind of guess, gone back to basics with the uh, last year's remake with Jamie Lee Curtis re- returning. Although um, I'm not, I wasn't a massive fan of it. Uh, it looks interesting for the, 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 the back-to-back sequels they're filming, but it looks like they're going... Uh, some eagle-eyed people have seen uh, shots which looks like they're recreating 1978 in the upcoming movie. So it'd be interesting to see what Ooh. they do with that. Although I still struggle to work out how they're going to bring Michael Myers back. Uh, yes. But it also... He's, had, a, he's a fucking Big Mac overdone. Well, exactly. Or, a, you know, he's just like a, an urn, isn't he? Maybe, uh, maybe his presence is set towards a more prequel aspect, and then mm. in the new timeline, we'll have like a Roy type killer. That could Ooh. be. Well, I've seen, I have seen shots. There's someone shot a shot of because uh, it's filming right now, and there's uh, Haddonfield Memorial Hospital. So it'd be interesting to see uh, what they do with that. Whether they play with that whole thing of the uh, the 1981 sequel, or they or they just kind of nod to it or whatever. But it obviously makes sense that those characters, the Jamie Lee Curtis and those other characters, would Laurie Strode would be heading to hospital to uh, to recover from their injuries. But, yeah, re- um, obviously it remains to be seen. But uh, Jamie Lee, she's like, history's just repeating for me right now. But I- I'm glad, you know. Yeah, I'm excited to see, because Kyle Richards is back playing Lindsay Wallace, mm. and Charles Cyphers is back playing Brackett, the Sheriff Brackett. And I think one other, oh yeah, uh, Nancy Stevens is back as... Marion, is that her name? The nurse? The nurse, yeah. Uh, now, why didn't so, they get the original uh, Tommy Doyle? Why'd they cast uh, Anthony Michael Hall as the new Yeah, Tommy I don't know. I, maybe they... I don't think the original Tommy Doyle has acted since... The, I have uh, seen... I've seen some rather unflattering uh, uh, things online um, about that. So I think oh. if you maybe sort of dig around, uh, you might sort of find that. Oh, that, okay. Mm. So, but who Who knows? But uh, yeah, so it'd be, it'd be interesting. It sounds like the in the sequel that he's going to be going. Michael Myers is going to be going after peripheral characters in the uh, the following films. But uh, yeah, you know, Hayne sort of uh, looking forward to to that. But it certainly can't be any worse. You know, I would much rather be back in that, even if it's a a kind of weakish imitation of John Carpenter's films, or it's a kind of second go around type thing. These are they're much more. Uh, you know, we're talking about the popcorn feel and things that you know Nathan's talking about, and I know we all enjoy. I would rather sit through Halloween 2018 a hundred times than watch uh, um, Rob Zombie's Halloween ever again. Yep, hundred percent agree. Yes. So we we have done that, of course. We have worse to come with Halloween too, but we have a whole year to recover and to yes. uh, yeah. But um, we, uh, I think it's fair to say that we probably, uh, as we said, this film. I mean, I'm sure we know that some of you listening to this love the movie or have fond memories of it or whatever. Uh, and um, we had more feedback. I think is it fair to say, Joseph, for this than any other movie we've ever done? Yes, um, honestly, yeah. Like like Justin said, this is probably the most feedback we've ever had on any movie. But honestly, um, I think I. I think we've grown a little tired of reading the feedback. I mean, don't get me wrong. We appreciate your feedback and we want you to keep writing in. But honestly, it's basically just rehashing this 
two different opinions over and over. And I, I don't find that really entertaining. It's kind of monotonous. So what inst- So what we're going to do instead is something new. Um, I'm going to pick two pieces of feedback, uh, one from someone who liked the film and one from someone who didn't like the film. And you two will be our listeners of the week. And we Ooh, will do should that. Be a jingle. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll create a jingle. Um, this is kind of in its rough stage. Uh, we're going to do that from now on. We'll have two listeners of the week. We'll read your feedback. Um, everyone else, keep uh, you know, keep submitting your feedback. Uh, we do appreciate it. Uh, maybe we'll, we'll we'll read yours out on the show, and you'll get to be a listener of the week. Also, um, I've tallied all the the uh, the comments, and basically, um, from everyone who's commented, it looks like. 67 percent and i'm sorry 63 percent in uh, disliked the film and 37 percent enjoyed the film so i found those numbers uh kind of interesting 37 percent is kind of high for this film wouldn't you say considering all four of us uh 100 agree that we all hate it yeah i was surprised but i mean when you see it has 6.1 out of uh, out of 10 on imdb then it kind of makes sense on the positive side um our listener of the week is carl leto he says i was surprised when I first discovered how many people really disliked this film. I saw it at the cinemas when it first came out and thought it was a really original reimagining of the John Carpenter film. The first half of the film was completely unexpected, but shot through with a ni- with a 1970s, early 1980s grindhouse horror sensibility that, we, that every member of the cast and crew had clearly taken to with abandon. The second half seems to blend Halloween 1, 4, and 5 together while using the aesthetic of old VHS 80 slashers contrast issues mixed with the meanness of Lustig's Maniac. I thought there was something wrong with McDowell's performance, but that was the only obvious negative I remember. I have a feeling a lot of the vitriol for the film is because it's called Halloween and is a remake of a film that so many horror films hold in high regard. And I think we disagreed with that earlier in the uh, the show. But uh, he goes on to say, however, it's a really fruitless, it's really fruitless to compare them as they were both made at the very different times by completely different directors who had very different intentions. I enjoyed the Carpenter film. Uh, uh, more, but the Rob Zombie film definitely had something going for it. That was uh, our listener of the week on the positive side. That's Carl Leto. He liked the film. What do you guys think about Carl Leto's like of the film? Well, I think it's Fair a, enough. Everyone, yeah. Everyone's got yeah, yeah, yeah things. I mean, one thing he did raise, which I, I forgot to uh, mention, was I wasn't really sure what the time period of this movie was meant to be because yeah, it was all over the place, wasn't it? It was um, because uh, the character. Because I was thinking, if you look at it in a in a kind of timeline, then Michael Myers would have killed his sister in 1992, wouldn't? but um but then loomis you had this kind of this thing with like shooting black and white in a sanitarium as if it was just because it was a cool Mm. effect but it didn't make any sense And his hair was kind of 60s or 70s looking from when he had that floppy fringe back then yeah and also he he was wearing not to mention the the Mm. the 70s kind of glam rock like love hurts by bad company or whoever that was that does that and all the the music on the soundtrack felt 1970 but it felt almost like they were in a trailer park in the late 80s or early 90s when the film opened i couldn't make heads or tails of it no no but i think it's gonna say if you if you can find enjoyment in this film then good for you i mean i'm all for people enjoying anything i mean i love some of the most hated films out there so i mean i can understand uh, anybody loving you know any film <laughs> yeah you more than well, anyone yeah, more than anyone yep. yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on the dislike side our listener of the week is tim s turner and he says Rob Zombie's Halloween is like watching your best friend get beaten up as thugs hold you back from helping. Again and again, the punches rain down until your friend, once proud, beautiful, smart, and classy, is reduced to an ugly slab of bloody, shitty meat that no one recognizes or desires ever again. You cry and mourn, but the deed is done, and you lay there, helpless, knowing that maybe if you'd done something, anything, this tragedy of epic proportions could have been avoided. But you didn't. And now you have to live with the fact that this obscenity-laden shit stain has happened and the world is a worse place for it. But I don't want to be overly dramatic about how much I dislike it or anything. Well, tell us how you feel, Tim. I wow. Think we've, we've held back every <laughs> yeah. yeah, He's passionate. He's so uh, passionate. that's that's our new feedback portion of the show. I think that goes a lot smoother than it used to. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I agree. 
But also, Good don't stuff. forget you can email us um, and with more generalised questions about uh, things or other kind of feedback, which we will still be looking to to read on the show. So obviously, you know, everyone is, is like our little Facebook community. Um, you know, you can still read all the comments on there, so they're still there for everyone to go back and have a look at. But uh, yeah, it's it's just that um, as the show gets more popular, fingers crossed, then uh, obviously uh, it, it can, it's getting a little bit unwieldy for to read back everything. So, uh, but thank you everyone who has taken the time to to write in. A uh, big shout out to all our Patreon supporters. Uh, I you know I know we've had a few new ones as well, so who've come aboard of the American Wealth in London uh, episode. So thank you to those and our loyal listeners. Uh, say we couldn't do the show without you. So if you um, we'll be announcing actually we might as well announce now, shall we? What the next patron? Picks well, mm. I'm kind of wondering if Eric has a joke of the week. Ah. I do have a joke of the week. Yes. Well, I'm just kind of I'm not announcing the the next pick for the main show. I was just going to bet for the Patreon. Oh, oh the next one. Okay. That, well, it's my pick yes. next, and we're going to the to London this time, or possibly the US. Who can tell? It's Hellraiser. Yes. So that will yeah, be an interesting. And don't talk about. forget, we'll also be doing top three uh, horror or slasher films films from 1980 exactly so join us for that and but unfortunately from one joke uh to our joke to another a shorter one hopefully it's yeah it's only two hours don't worry it's my joke of the week it's so so fantastic how did the final girl escape the killer in halloween laurie strode (laughs) did she scout the location oh (laughs) <laughs> Nathan yeah, got it. and it was filmed in Compton. <laughs> oh. <laughs> now, Justin, it's your turn. But he's a sound effect guy. He can't do anything. <laughs> that was a triple whammy joke. That was. Yeah, so. that, that was actually better than the movie. Of course, what is Oh. So now it's time to discover. What now it's time week. to discover what we're covering next time, and will it be a step up or a step down? Well, there's I think uh, the chances are probably good that it'll be a step up. So Joseph, it's your choice next time. What are you going to be? Where are you going to be taking us? Well, there's only the only way to go is up. Honestly, mm-hmm. so um, we are going to cover Broken Lizards Club Dread. Uh, Nathan and I watched that last night, and I, well, I'm not going to say whether I liked it or disliked it, but I figure with it fresh on my mind, it'd be a good pick, and it's obviously better than Rob Zombie's Halloween. So, plus, uh, there have been a few people clamoring for it on the Facebook group. So, there you go. Club cool. Dread. Well, I have not seen that one since it came out, so I, uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how I, you know, what it's uh, what it's like seeing it all these years later so that will be next time um and eric what are we playing out with uh, i was thinking maybe rubbish by carter the unstoppable sex machine but i w- instead went for trash by suede i think it Ooh. sums it up nicely good choice Ooh. fantastic so good choice. so we're playing out with that uh and uh well yeah we shall look forward to uh, heading off to caribbean island which doesn't have jennifer love hewitt on it that's a caribbean island to you and nathan there joseph yeah, sorry. Yeah, I know, I know what he meant. I yeah, know what okay. he meant, Eric. Yeah, thank you, Captain Obvious. But, yeah. um, <laughs> so, <laughs> right, okay, so uh, say goodbye to the good people. Bye. Fucking goodbye, fucking fuck. fuck. <laughs> Hell yeah, Dragula motherfuckers, bye! That's my Rob Zombie impression. Very good. Right, okay, uh, and goodbye from me. I'm going to die from Boomer. Goodbye from my yeah. dog Boomer. <laughs> my Boomer. I'm going to try to kill me.